Hello and welcome to Das Nostalgia. I am Anatoly and today I'd like to take a look at games made by Weiring Software, a Dutch company with just one man behind it, Mike Weiring. Mario & Luigi, the company's first game, was released as freeware in 1994. Weiring didn't really intend to make a full Super Mario clone, and it was just an attempt to make a 2D platformer engine with parallax scrolling that could function smoothly on the 486 in Turbo Pascal. The game turned out to be pretty good, with fast frame rate, which by the way I have to point out is much smoother than what you see in this 30fps video, two-layer parallax scrolling, bright VGA graphics and responsive controls. It's basically something in between Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario World. There are many slight differences, such as separate buttons for running and shooting, and the fact that you get a massive boost if you jump while stomping on an enemy. A lot of the levels are even based around that. You can travel both left and right within the levels, and enemies respawn when they leave the screen. The game only has simple PC speaker sound effects, which are good enough, but since there is no music, it's hard to tell when your invincibility power-up runs out. Two players can play together by taking turns, and there are three save game slots available. The game only has six levels and no final boss. After you beat the game, it cycles back to the first level and makes everything go faster, which makes you jumps higher, and you also get some different backgrounds. An interesting thing is that an unfinished version of the game containing only four levels was hacked and distributed as fake shareware, asking for a $15 payment. There is also the still of Tiger Woods playing it. This game is fun and is still available to download, along with full source code and Turbo Pascal. So, Mike Wearing made a rather fun and polished game for 15 or 20 minutes, but he was far from done. 1995 saw the release of Super Worms, a game obviously inspired by Super Mario Kart. It's a simple racing game where the racers are worms made of spheres. Just about everything from Mario Kart is here, the smooth graphics, the colorful stages, bonuses that give you an advantage or can be used as weapons against your opponents, and an option for two-player split-screen, but I feel the game is just not interesting enough. The stages, despite being varied, as well as the racers themselves, don't have much of a personality. All bonuses look like boring bubbles. New addition is sound effects via Adlib or Sound Blaster, but they're nothing to write home about either. One cool thing is that it's really small, just under 71 kilobytes, less than an icon image nowadays, but it doesn't save it from being boring. I personally feel that Apogee's Wacky Wheels, despite not having frame rate this smooth, is a much better alternative, and the game isn't really worth 1250 that's being asked for it today. In 1996, Wearing Software released its first commercial platformer, Charlie the Duck. While it's clearly based on the same Mario and Luigi technology, and again is very much Super Mario World inspired, there's quite a few improvements and differences. First, the game feels even smoother despite having three layers of parallax scrolling instead of two. Charlie is really easy to control and now your life pretty much depends on learning how to use the enemy jump boost properly, because the maps don't mess around. This game is very challenging. Flying enemies that follow you everywhere were added, and are as annoying as you might expect. Instead of going down pipes, Charlie can swim down pools of water. A good improvement over nearly always deadly water present in classic platformers. Each map has a ton of secrets, and you'll encounter tough bosses as well. The environments and sprites are all very colorful and varied. The game has basic sound blaster or ad-lib sound effect support. Overall, I think this game is very enjoyable if you like challenging platformers. Nowadays you can get it for 750, and as a bonus you'll also get the next game I'll be talking about. Super Angelo was released to the world in 1997. This time it's a bit of a step back, as this is a blatant commercial Super Mario clone. You play as Angelo. Let's pretend it's Mario's cousin who does masonry or maybe roofing. 
who has to rescue a princess from a dragon by going through overworld, underworld, and castle levels. Yep. Most of the cool improvements of Charlie the Duck are gone, and the game art doesn't quite look as detailed or varied. A couple of notable differences are an additional level of strength for the gun power-up, which is this game's stand-in for the flower power, and the fact that Angel doesn't instantly die when he lands on water and actually has a chance to rescue himself. The levels got even harder. They are full of all kinds of unfair and unexpected traps. Especially the castle levels. There really isn't much else to talk about. This game isn't commercially available anymore, I guess to avoid attracting potential wrath of the mighty Nintendo, but if you get Charlie the Duck, the same registration code can be used to activate the shareware version of Super Angelo. Also, there is a free Flash version available on the website. Let's move on. In 1998, Mike released another freeware platformer, a Christmas game called Sint Nicolas. You play as a Dutch version of good old Saint Nick, who needs to retrieve multicolored presents that were stolen from him and deliver them, along with delicious gingerbread cookies, to appropriate houses. The color of a required present is indicated by a marker on the house, but you can only deliver the first present you are holding, with each new present being added to the back of the queue. Flying enemies have been reinstated in the form of birds, who are super annoying. While they will occasionally drop bonuses for you and can act as platforms providing the traditional for wearing software games jump boost, they will more likely just drain your health by constantly being in your way. And sometimes they'll even pick up items and carry them away. Despite being a game for children, Saint Nicholas is rather tough. The birds will get you in no time and it's very easy to slip off some of the platforms. I still recommend it though, as it is a neat free game to play around Christmas. There are even Flash and Android versions, and also two open source sequels for Windows. Can't really go wrong there. Then there was a gap of a few years, until in 2001 a Charlie the Duck sequel, Charlie 2, was released. The game was changed significantly. First, the maps now have four-way scrolling, and the game is a lot more demanding on the hardware than any of the previous titles. The goal of the game changed as well. Now you're going around the level collecting coins and diamonds until you have a percentage that exceeds the one dictated by the level of difficulty that you selected, and only then can you go about finding an exit and finishing the level. I don't really enjoy this game. The jump and boost mechanic that was present in the previous titles has been removed and I really miss it as it would have been very welcome here. The maps are full of flying enemies and traps and having the focus switch to exploration is really making the matters worse because you're always checking every nook and cranny, often only to end up losing health in the end. The percentage of coins and diamonds is not displayed when you're picking them up instead of just a counter. In the first few versions you could even exit the level without collecting the needed amount of pickups and then you'd have to start the level over. The presentation of the game is really nice, although not that much different from the first game, and large open maps with multi-layer parallax scrolling are impressive, but I personally just find this game too annoying to be enjoyable. This game is currently available for $15 and an expansion pack of additional 18 levels is available for another 15. A Windows version is also available and features further improvements. And this is it for all of the DOS games from Wearing Software. At some point an MPU-401 MIDI support was added to most games giving them very nice sound effects and in some cases music. Mike Wearing went on to develop Tile Studio, a 2D map editing tool, and Olaf and Elmar, a Sokoban inspired puzzle game for Windows. I have to say I really like his games. They might not be perfect, but they all are very polished for games made by just one person, especially back in those days. At the time, shareware giants were switching to full retail distribution, once again freeing up the market for smaller developers. Wearing's shareware work spans over a decade, and all of these titles are still available. Since they're shareware, a short version of each is available for free, and I would encourage you to give these games a try. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.
This is it, the video is over, but special thanks goes out to all these awesome DOS enthusiasts who made this video possible. If you enjoy watching me go through DOS games and software, check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel and consider supporting DOS Nostalgia on Patreon. Thank you again.